Hello everybody, my fellow and aspiring hand balancers. This is day number 11 of the 30 day couch to handstand challenge, which helps you to go from never having done any handstands at all to hopefully being able to manage to get up onto the wall for a normal straight line handstand at the end of these 30 days. I'm Natalie, I teach the art of hand balancing. This is Puck, my holiday visitor who's gonna accompany us here for training. And we are going to start again with a little warm up. If this is the first video that you encounter, maybe you wanna go back to the first video and start at the very beginning and then meet us along the line of this journey here in video number 11. starting again feet parallel finding our center line of balance hand balancing is not just about muscular practice and sweating and intensive training it is also about recentering ourselves to our very natural center line of balance that we actually establish every day just by standing on our feet so let's focus in again on how wonderfully the body is stacked on top of each other. We have, we have our hips just stacked right above the knees and the ankles, the shoulders floating on top, the spinal column, column, the spinal column is upright, held upright with ease, the head on top, imagine that you have a thread attached the crown of your head maybe you want to close your eyes here for a second and just imagine how your spine freely floats in the air rises up grows taller your head is growing taller the head can't quite grow taller but you can grow taller with your head floating further up while your feet are firmly planted into the ground center line of balance is our center of gravity which often in release technique is thought to fall into the floor. Basically, that, that thought of weight falling into the floor means that you are holding your muscles with the minimum amount of effort in order to facilitate a certain position, like standing upright, we have the most efficient minimal muscular engagement to allow this complex posture, if you think about it, quite complex posture of standing and walking to happen every day. And we have a center of gravity that if you wanted to draw a straight line, there would be a straight line from your center of gravity, which is mainly your hips and, and your pelvic floor into the ground. So from here, let's just take the weight forward onto our toes to the front. Feel how your body naturally aligns itself by digging the toes into the ground, engaging the quads, having a bit more of a core engagement, and then rock back to your center line. Take it to the back and feel how now your toes are sort of also slightly gripping and the front of your legs are a bit more engaged, the front of your shins are more engaged. Now come back to center line. Take it to the right. Feel how your right glutes are slightly engaging a bit more. Take it to the center line. Take it to the left. Feel how your left glute is engaging a bit more. And take it to the center. So this isn't uh, some esoteric concept, it's also just body awareness, yeah? So when we are learning new movement, then we partly need to build up strength, flexibility, but also proprioception, which means the awareness of our body, which sometimes can be hard to access with specific thoughts. It's more of an intrinsic feeling. So sometimes along the way in this program, in these 30 days, I'm going to give you intrinsic images, physical images, for example, like that image that you're being pulled up by a string so that you can grow taller and, and that way achieve an elevation in your body and length in your spine. So just as we did in the last video now, step your feet slightly apart and we just initiate a gentle rotation here now by 
pulling the front of the stomach in towards the spine so it's not just the navel it is the lower abdominals and the top abdominals imagine that your imagine your stomach is kind of like a surface no matter whether it's here or here it's kind of like you have a wall in front of you and you're trying to pull the wall closer to you that's the feeling of pulling your stomach in towards your spine and just take the arms to the right for a gentle twist to the left gentle twist and let's give that twist a little bit more of a swing and we swing and swing and maybe you can allow your arms to relax a little bit so that quite naturally as your shoulders move from side to side there's a rebound here at the end of the rotation yeah that moment when you draw the shoulders back the other direction as a slight rebound and that maybe allows you to pat yourself here on the back and on the front so you can use this as a gentle massage for your lower back this is a very gentle movement there isn't anything forceful about it there shouldn't be any pain in the lower back or any discomfort this is a this is supposed to be a pleasant spiraling warm-up movement let's just do this for a couple of more seconds and then gently bring it down and now let's do our windmill shoulder warm-up from yesterday so remember um there's a wall in front of you and a wall behind you you slide your fingers on the wall the imaginary wall behind you in front of you let's do this this time now for 10 and remember allow your body to move with your arm so there's a natural figure of eight which is initiated by this windmill movement and just allow yourself to follow along four one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten okay other side just visualize it for a second again, wall in front of you, the wall behind you, wall in front of you, wall behind you. And let's go for 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. Let's take it into opening and closing the rib cage, our most fundamental activation exercise for the upper back. So let's curve. Open up, remember, into a diagonal. Curve and open. Curve and open. Let's do six more a little bit faster. One and two and three and four and five and six okay great now again as we did i think a couple of videos ago swimming motion with your shoulders so you lift the shoulder up to the ear you move it front lift the shoulder up to the ear move it front lift 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 okay very good just open up the shoulders gently a little bit more and we are going to repeat again our activation warm-up for the upper body here for our shoulder muscles biceps and the rhomboids here in the back that support you in your handstand let's push out to the side this time 15 to the side 15 up, 15, 15 complete movements here and 15 circles to the back. So take a deep breath in because this will be a little bit more challenging than everything we've done so far. It's a slight step up. 
but I trust that you are ready for it and that you can find your comfortable space in that new challenge. So let's do this for 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Push the elbows straight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Arms above you. Push the shoulders up, elevate them for 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. By your side, directly by your side, not front or back. Let's just move them up and down to 45 degrees for 1, 2, 3, Four, press the shoulders away from the ear. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now all the way, 180 degrees. One, two, three. Push the shoulders away from the ears. Don't allow them to come up here. Three, four. Push the shoulders down. Six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, stick with me. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Keep them here by your side. Now let's move backwards. Circles for fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right. And even I can feel that burning here in my arms. So just shake your arms for a second. You're already starting to build up some heat. That's great. It's part of our warm up. Let's just open and close the fingers. Open and close quickly. Faster, faster, and a bit faster. And relax. All right. Warming up the hamstrings. Oh, which I have to move you from my mat a little bit, my little sweet cutie dog. That's it. I wish I could just slide along the floor like that. Okay. Now, um, just stand upright. Uh, start rolling down vertebra by vertebra, starting on the crown of the head until you touch the floor. If you don't touch the floor, eventually you are going to bend the knees and take your hands to the floor. Place them wherever you need them to be, maybe a bit further to the front. Walk your feet out to the back. So we come into somewhat of a triangular shape. Um, knees bend as much as you need them. Try to evenly distribute the weight on hands and feet. We step in and out for five and then we change the leg that we're starting with so let's start now with the right leg step in step out for one and two push the heel into the floor and three and four and five now let's start with the left foot for one and step out two step out and three step out step in step out five step out just stay here and from this position now see if you can drive your heels into the ground pedal it out so you drive one heel then the other you lift up onto your toes Keep both knees bent if you have to. Straighten them if you have that option available. Now drive the heel into the ground. Both, oops, I'm sliding on my mat. Drive both heels into the ground and see if you can straighten your back just a tiny bit. Okay, great. Come down to all fours here four-point position and let's again warm up 
gently our wrists as we did yesterday. So we've got the front of the fingers pressed against the mat, against the floor. We push away, we push the fingers into the floor here while we change the angle of the wrist. So the wrist is going to a maximum angle here, flip to the front and then slightly opens it up. Yeah, it's just like a little hinging movement here. Yeah, so you press into the mat, press and press. Let's do this for eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now hands flat, press your straight fingers into the ground and lift the palm for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now today let's take a little adventure here and actually try and align the shoulders and the wrists here on top of each other. And we, I think you're in the way of the camera. I'm gonna slide you again. That's it. Okay, so really let's take the shoulder above the wrist and um, come up onto your five fingers, five fingered, five legged spider here. Yeah, try and take a bit more weight and let's go up with the left hand first then we turn it around five each direction and left up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Let's start with the right side. Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, one more, more, up, up, down, down. Fantastic. Okay. Now dig your fingers into the ground once. Imagine there are your toes. Imagine they're digging into the ground just as your toes did when you were leaning to the front, right? You have that connection with the ground. Now press your fingers into the ground at the same time. Lock your elbows out and push the shoulders. Push the shoulders to the front, into the ground. Have that doming feeling in your upper back. Yeah. So if you find it hard to locate that feeling of the doming feeling, that feeling of push in the shoulders, just sit up one more time. We've done this already a few times. It's always great to do it again. Sit up cross-legged or whichever is comfortable for you and press your arms to the front. Press the shoulders to the front and imagine that you remember when we did the curve and contract so it's that feeling of curving, curving while at the same time pushing the shoulders front. Yeah that is what I mean when I talk about taking the core engagement into a shoulder elevation. In a handstand we are always working from the core into the shoulders, into the ground. So let's do our very first basic wake up, core, core wake up activation. You tuck the toes under, we lift the knees and stay here for 20 seconds. Yes, lift the knees, lock the elbows out, press into the floor, lift for one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and gently lower it down. Okay, great. Take a deep breath. So we're going to work in a very similar way than yesterday and just um, sometimes it's useful to do the same exercises over a couple of days to really get to know them well um, and um, try to not get bored. If you get bored, see whether you can find a different angle to the exercise or pay attention to whether there's a new feeling in that exercise today. No practice day no training day will ever be the same. There's always something to discover and actually usually when you get bored with exercises it's 
because your awareness is shifting away from your body and the awareness is more on, oh, we're doing it again. It's the repetition, it's a chore. But no, it's not a chore, it's the joy of working with your body, checking in with your strength and your progress every day. And that's gonna be different every day. So there's always something to discover. Basically, I'm just gonna try. <laughs> Basically, I'm just trying to make these um, sit-up exercises more interesting. No, I'm joking. So you lie down on your back. And um, this time, let's try and touch the ankles here for 20. And let's do sit-ups for 20. Small sit-ups, chin pulling up to the ceiling. Now, here's an option. If you feel like this is too challenging, you hold onto your thighs and you use your arms to pull you, yeah, in those sit-ups. That is an option. Otherwise, we now start with the shoulder blades off the floor. We touch the ankles for 20 and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, lower down, take a deep breath in, deep breath out, interlace the fingers behind the head or hold on to your thighs, let's do sit ups for 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, fantastic, lower down. Let's repeat our knees at 90 degrees, lifting the knees up towards the chest and lowering the pointed toe towards the ground. Let's do this for 20, pushing the lower back into the ground. For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So when I get really bored with sit-up exercises, every time I do the sit-up, I poke my abs to reassure myself that I'm working hard and I am building up muscles. <laughs> and that's usually a very good incentive to keep going. Now, let us do one more exercise, which is new. Looks like this, um, hands by my side, lift the toes and just shift the feet left and right. Ideally, you straighten them entirely, but um, choose an option which is most comfortable for you and within the range of what's challenging for you. So maybe it just goes until here. That is uh, your choice independent movers choice and let's try and do this for 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay let's work on the shoulder opening with this wonderful stretch from a prayer position so let's get into this in a very simple way first. Child's position, move your arms forwards as much as you can. Maybe this already gives you a good stretch if that's the case. Just stay here. If you want to move on and take it a bit further, you now place the elbows on the ground. Elbows on the ground. You press your palms together and then you move your elbows a little bit further to the front, walk them to the front, and at the same time, you try and push the shoulders lower to the ground. And you also want to have the elbows together as much as possible. So the closer you bring the elbows here together, the more intense the stretch is. Yeah, so. Move them to the front, walk it to the front, and then stay, if you want to, bring the palms further towards your head. 
Stay here with me and breathe. Okay. Slowly release. Come back to sitting. We turn around. Place your hands diagonally on the floor. Lift the chest high up to the ceiling. Stay here and breathe. And come back slowly. Let's come back to a four point position here. As we did before now, we're going to lift one foot and opposite arm and touch knee and our elbow. This is the elbow. <laughs> um, for ten, yeah? So let's go together for one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. Other side, opposite arm and foot for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Okay, take a breath. We're now moving a little bit faster through the exercises. So it may seem a bit more exhausting to you, but actually we are just um, uh, moving faster because we're more familiar with it. So now dig your fingers into the ground, lock the elbows out, push the shoulders front. Let's take it to a halfway handstand and stay here with me for 20 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Lower down to the ground. Take a deep breath. We're going to do skipping and then this one here, the halfway handstand again for 20 seconds. But before that, you remember the skipping we did in the last video? Let's do the skipping now for 20. Remember to land softly on the ground. We want to land softly and almost suspend our weight slightly in the air. Bend your knees here as much as you need them and lift the hips as high as you can. Try and keep the shoulders in line with your wrist. And let's skip here now for 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Calm down. Breathe deeply in and out. Recover for our next set of 20 seconds in a halfway handstand. So the key of handstand practice, as you'll notice, if you will follow this handstand journey a bit further on is to do an intensive training at the end of every practice that has short breaks. So that's why I'm partly that's partly why I'm trying to keep these breaks at the end of the session short. Dig your fingers into the ground, lock the elbows out, push your hips up to a halfway handstand. Choose a focus point for your eyes and stay here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen, twenty. Gently lower down. Find your box chair, whatever you have, as an elevation. Secure it against the wall if you need to. And let's stay here on our elevation now again for two times. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. And that is the end of the practice. 
So let's prop the feet up here now. Stay here for a while. Lift the hips as high as you can. Uh, maybe a little bit higher than yesterday. So if you can challenge yourself, find a focus point for your eyes in between your hands. Maybe you want to leave your hand long for 20 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20 and step down. Take a deep breath. Recover. So visualize that you have just managed to hold this for 20 seconds. If you've managed to hold this now, you will be able to hold the next set. Remember, lock the elbows. Push the shoulders to the front. Dig the fingers into the ground. Let's go. Place the feet high up. Push your hips up. Stay here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Step down, fantastic, great, well done. We are doing some serious practicing here by now. So now um, sit cross-legged or on your knees as you like. Interlock the fingers behind you, straighten the spine, push your elbows straight. Stay here with me. And slowly release the elbows. Take the arm across your front. Take hold of your elbow or even of your shoulder. So you can even either lock your arm in like this or just press the arm towards you. It's important that you keep the shoulder down and press the arm towards you. I like to hold on to the other elbow here even. And I get a better grip onto the arm and can push the arm further towards me but keep this shoulder here pushed away from your ears and hold it release let's go to the other side arm across your front take hold of your elbow or just lock the arm like this maybe you want to hold on to this elbow here the other one, push the arm towards you, keep this shoulder here, down. And press the arm towards you. So you should feel a stretch across your rotator cuff and maybe your triceps. Okay, let's check in one more time with our nerves, the nerves in our fingers running all the way up to our neck by pressing the palms into the floor press the shoulders away from the ears flex your fingers towards you and spread the fingers hold it and release okay that was it for today Day number 11. I hope I see you back for day number 12 on your journey to a handstand against the wall. Thank you very much for putting in this time. It is quite a lot of work. It does require patience and I hope that I can guide you along the process.